Hey guys, welcome to System Design Fight Club. We are going to do a quick run of chapter 10 from Alex Shu's upcoming book. Uh, it is on the topic of designing an echo chamber. I mean, a personalized newsfeed. The requirements will be users can make a post, users can like the posts of other users. Um, you should show the user posts that they are prone to like on their newsfeed, stuff they'll engage with. Um, so uh, let's just kind of start off with the data model that I'm expecting here. I think that he's going to go with a, it's, it's going to be a recommender system. And uh, I think it will be content-based filtering um, as opposed to a uh, um, one of the other approaches. What is it? Collaborative filtering. Yeah. So it will not be collaborative filtering here. Um, so uh, this is going to have text-based data. So for text-based data, it'll be important to do uh, term frequency inverse document frequency, TF-IDF, that's a really standard thing. You should do stimming on that data. Uh, you should also filter out uh, the um, stop words. Um, so e.g. is the a, stuff like that. Um, and then for the actual model, uh, like the actual thing that you'd be training, it's probably going to be something like a uh, gradient boosting machine. Well, so it's it's classification, it's classification. Uh, so likely a gradient boosting machine, um, like um, XG boost. Uh, I mean, there's there's plenty of other classifiers there. So like alternatives are like neural nets. Um, gradient boosting machines are really hard to train. Um, I, I know that from experience, it's really fun to um, start with maybe a random forest before you jump all the way in on doing a gradient boosting machine. Those are, those are, uh, those, those require a lot of parameter tuning, a whole lot of it. Um, a lot of the uh, grid search with uh, all the different parameters, uh, huge pain in the butt. So a lot of times we'll just kind of start with a uh, random forest for your very first one. And then uh, later on, you'll go ahead and tune the heck out of your uh, gradient boosting machine. All right, let's go ahead and hop into um, the diagram. Um, so like I said, we are going to have, uh, they're going to be able to make a post. They're going to be able to like a post. So uh, client, make post, make post. We're going to have, uh, whoops. There we go. Uh, client uh, liking a post. Uh, yeah, we're going to kind of leave that a little bit later. I'm going to do it like that. Then we're going to have um, view timeline. And this one's going to be trickier one. Uh, view news feed. View news feed. Okay. So uh, we are going to have a news feed service. This is going to be the really nasty thing that is going to require some work. So we're going to call it the uh, news feed service. And uh, you're going to want to um, do uh, two different things here. One of them is retrieve your timeline like you normally would have done on, um, like you normally would have done with um, just regular old Twitter. Um, so that's our, that's our old thing. We're going to call that the retrieval service. Uh, so let's go ahead and stick that over here. And uh, so you're making a request in. You have your user ID. You have your good old user ID. You want a list of posts back. And so now you're going to talk to the retrieval service. You're saying, I want that uh, list of posts. And so originally we had our uh, timeline. So we're going to go ahead and bring back our timeline that you might be familiar with from, uh, for example, the solution to um, uh, uh, Twitter or just really anything that had a news feed on it. Um, so there's the timeline DB. And so you're going to make a uh, request response to that. You're going to get the, the you're going to call it. You're going to get your list of stuff back. And then um, we can go ahead and just return it. And we're not, we're going to keep this one pretty simple, just like it was before. And then we're going to have our filtering service. We're going to go ahead and do some filtering. This is where the echo chamber part comes in. So we've got our filtering service. So we got our list of, um, we have our, we're just passing in our user ID in order to fetch the, um, the uh, timeline for 
ourself. So there's the user ID and it's passing all the way up to there. And then we have our list of posts, uh, list of posts coming back. And then we have it over here. And then we're gonna pass it over to our filtering service, which is where we are finally going to go ahead and filter all that nasty stuff out that we don't like and just have the stuff that we are likely to engage with. Um, so there are uh, two different things that we're gonna wanna do. So it's, it's uh, you, would, you would flatten the posts out. Let's, let's maybe come back to this in a second and talk a little bit about making the posts is that you would have um, the posting service over here. We're gonna have the posting service. Uh, let's make a little bit more room for ourselves. Move that up. Have this. I'm going to do a call to here. Hey, here's my post that I want to make. And you're going to have your post DB. Um, so post DB. You're going to, um, of course, first write to over there. And it's going to do a fan out to the timeline DB. There's a couple of different ways that we can do that. Um, uh, I know there's the, the popular one involves the message broker, but you can really just kind of do a DB trigger and um, have a fan out worker running off of that. So we will have, um, these will be the fan out workers, um, fan out uh, workers. Okay, and then we are gonna do um, this. And we're gonna label that. And that is gonna be change data capture with, uh, a DB trigger, just like that. Boom. Uh, and it's going to fan it out to um, this, the timeline DB, to all the different, uh, you know, um, all the different people that are following you. And there you have it. And so uh, unfiltered, it will just kind of have all of them coming in. Um, now we have it over here in the filtering service, and we want to have that in a language that our data model can understand. And so we are also going to have the post uh, feature DB. This is a feature store. It is, um, it is a feature store. Uh, and so that means that the schema is going to look like uh, this. It is going to, we're gonna have a table where the rows are posts and the columns are the features. So rows equal posts uh, and the columns are going to be the features. And then of course, that means we're gonna to have to do some translation here. Um, and uh, it's, it's uh, you would you'd normally figure out the features through um, clustering. And uh, that's that's where all this fun stuff is gonna come in. And uh, I think we're not really gonna focus on that as much. I feel like Alex is just not really gonna cover that part. He's probably gonna focus on the uh, classifier that I'm gonna have here in a minute. Um, and so again, we're going to have CDC. Well, oh, that is right. We need our transform task runners. We will need um, transform task runners. Let's move this over a little bit more. And so then this one is only coming over to here. And then we're going to have our transform task runners, just like that, which will uh, take the post and it'll normalize it into a language that our data model can understand, which is already determined uh, ahead of time with um, clustering and all that fun stuff from over here. And so we are going to take our post, we're gonna convert it to that language. So we got our list of posts and they're not in a normalized format. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna transform that into there. And then um, we are gonna use a model store we need to retrieve the data model. So it's content-based uh, filtering, which means that every single user has their own data model. I'm serious, it actually does that. So uh, every user has their own classifier. Go ahead and look it up on Wikipedia. That's how it works. Um, and so you will make a call to the model store. I've seen this other places. This is definitely how it works, model. Um, store. And it's just like an object store. You can use um, in Python, there's like pickle files. Um, so it's a uh, object store, like S3. Um, and it's just a mapping of um, user ID to uh, an object. Um, so uh, user ID 
to um, a data, a, a trained data model, which is like in, in Python, it's um, a pickle file. Boom. All right. And so we are going to make our call over there to fetch the uh, the model that is specific to uh, the user that's currently calling us. And that'll retrieve it. And I'm going to go ahead and stick that on here. Um, normally, it's deployed with the service. But in our case, with the content-based filtering, it's going to have to fetch it from the model store. Um, this might even be a CDN. It might even use a CDN. Um, so I'm going to make a note of that. Um, maybe CDN. Boom. Let's move that to the front. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so then uh, we will have our data model running. I'm going to tell you how that's going to work is that this specific data model, it'll take a, uh, a list of post IDs with their feature values, um, posts with um, feature values, their, their flattened uh, feature vector values. That is going to be the input. And then it'll turn it into um, uh, post scores, posts with scores. They're going to be scored. And then you're going to filter out anything that doesn't meet some kind of a threshold cutoff. Um, let's go ahead and maybe make that into a list is that we're going to have um, one, get our timeline. Uh, two, we are going to uh, convert the posts to posts with feature vowels. And then we're going to do three, get the user's trained data model. Um, four, uh, run the posts with feature vowels through the data model. And then uh, five, um, filter out all posts whose scores do not meet some threshold. Um, and then you can go ahead and return the remaining posts. OK, so we did that. We did the model. And then we filter it there. And then we can go ahead and return back the filtered post to the newsfeed service. And then we can return it uh, to the client. Uh, and we already went through um, this, the timeline DB. Um, I think, um, you know, I can do something similar to this for the model store. Uh, so we have the rows are actually uh, the uh, users and then the columns are uh, trained models. And, uh, oh, I wanna talk about how we get those trained models. Where do they come from? How do we have these trained models? We gotta talk about the training a little bit. Um, so let's have our, uh, training workers, our model training workers, uh, model training workers. And they're going to get some stuff from a data warehouse. I'm going to go through how we're going to get the stuff into the data warehouse as well, of course. Um, data, this is like a totally normal component. I saw a couple of times while I was working at Amazon. Uh, so we have our data warehouse. It's going to pull the data into the model training workers, and then it is going to uh, get a trained model, uh, trained data model, and it'll dump it over into the model object store. And then this is uh, this has a star schema. It's you, you know it's, it's data warehouse it has a crap load of um, stuff in it. Uh, so one of them is going to be from that liked posts. Feed. It is also going to have um, the feature store stuff, the feature store, the, the post feature store stuff should also be, it will, maybe those can just be pulled directly into the model training workers or um, yeah, let's maybe just have them pulled straight into the uh, well, maybe you want to, yeah, okay, you know what, you know what, yeah, you, you'd probably want to go ahead and um, normalize it over there. Instead, that would probably be a good idea. Um, 
So I'm, I'm saying there's two approaches here. You can either put it directly into the data warehouse, or maybe you can just pull it straight into the model trained, uh, the model training workers. I'm not sure what's best there. Um, okay, and then we're gonna have the post liking service. Liking service. So when you like a post, you're just doing a write operation. And then you're gonna have your likes in some kind of data store somewhere. And so then this will be the um, post uh, likes. Maybe it's all your likes for all the posts. So that's gonna be written somewhere. And I mean, that's also gonna get pulled up as well somehow for your newsfeed and stuff. Um, not really what we're focusing on here, but of course we also want that data in the data warehouse. For um, that is the labels, that is the classification labels. So this is very important to have that. This is a uh, crucial for, um, let's label that maybe. Uh, likes become um, labels for the classifier to use for training. That is the uh, positive and negative reinforcement that's gonna run off of. Okay. We got everything we need here. Come on. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and then um, so this little thing right here, you can actually merge those three services. There's there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, you guys have been following with my other system designs so far, hopefully. This one's rather advanced because this is you know machine learning. And um, there's not a lot of content out there on it. And I think the bar is a little bit higher, but it, uh, these three services can be merged in some manner. Um, you can merge like, for example, the retrieval service and the newsfeed service. What, what I've seen in some other stuff I was working off of was just all three of them literally just in one. And then you have a whole bunch of calls being made directly off of the newsfeed service. It was directly fetching the timeline, directly um, doing the conversion with the post feature DB, and then directly pulling in the model directly onto the newsfeed service, doing the filtering there and then returning it. Um, so, I mean, you can merge them in any combination of ways, but uh, yeah, this should be it. This should be the, uh, this is how you design an echo chamber. Uh, thanks for joining me guys. I will see you next time.